Hey folks, Sally Riggs here, psychologist, fellow long hauler, and your long COVID coach. And today I wanted to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is the nervous system and why it is so relevant to our long COVID recovery. Now, first of all, we need to start out by clarifying that long COVID is undoubtedly a biological physiological illness and the reason we talk about the nervous system is not because of some mind body whatever but because there are biological reasons relating to the nervous system that are relevant to us we do have now a number of fantastic researchers who are doing great work looking at the pathophysiology of long covid and some emerging theories that are getting more evidence viral persistence endothelial damage and microclots, autoimmunity, and undoubtedly, again and again and again, comes up this idea of damage to the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is basically the middle of our autonomic nervous system. It runs from the base of our skull all the way into the bottom of our gut, and it is responsible for mediating an awful lot of messages between the gut, between all our major organ systems and the brain. And one of the things that it does beautifully when it's working is reducing inflammation and moderating immune function. And in our case, when it isn't working, we have tons of inflammation and immune dysfunction. So why is that so relevant to polyvagal theory? Well, polyvagal theory is this newer theory that has emerged more recently about the nervous system and breaking it into three different states. Most of us were taught in school that the nervous system had two states, parasympathetic and sympathetic. And this was the understanding that I had when I first contracted long COVID and people started talking to me about the nervous system and saying things like, Sally, you need to learn to spend more time in parasympathetic. And you may still hear people use that language, but it has been superseded by polyvagal theory and the work of Stephen Porges. And in fact, if you find yourself saying, I need to spend more time in parasympathetic, technically, shutdown comes under the heading of parasympathetic. And I explain that more in another video, which you can link through to. But if you are familiar with the concept of shutdown, that comes under that heading. So if we go around all the time saying sympathetic and parasympathetic, we're missing something. But you might be thinking, wait a second, Sally, what are you talking about here? And perhaps I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So we used to think that the nervous system had two states, parasympathetic, which you may have referred to as rest and digest, or sympathetic, which you may have heard referred to as fight, flight, or freeze. Well, it turns out that there actually are three systems. And the reason why there are three systems is because we have two branches of the vagus nerve, and we also have a sympathetic nerve that is separate. And these three systems do operate somewhat separately, although they all interconnect into each other. So instead of having one system called sympathetic, which does fight or flight or freeze, we actually have two systems, one that does fight or flight and one that does freeze. And this is very, 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 very relevant to us because one of the most prevalent symptoms of long COVID is chronic fatigue. Chances are if you have long COVID and you're watching this video now, you have some degree of fatigue that you're dealing with, if not a huge amount. And what happens is if we think of the nervous system hierarchically, so you've got your rest and digest at the top, you've got your fight or flight in the middle, and you've got your freeze at the bottom. And the vagus nerve becomes damaged by the spike protein, and this causes us to go into fight or flight overdrive. The blood runs from your extremities into your organ systems and can increase your heart rate, increase your body temperature, Ideally, it's meant to make you more focused, but it can also heighten anxiety, 
anger, things like that. And if we think about a lot of the dysautonomia symptoms that we have in long COVID, those are very much related to sympathetic activation. The dizziness, the nausea, like I said, the elevated heart rate, the changes in blood pressure, all to do with that sympathetic activation and initiated in our brainstem. But the thing about that is that our bodies cannot sustain fight or flight for an extended period of time. It can actually cause damage to our organs if we remain in that state for a long time and ultimately we would wind up dying. And so the body has this third protective mechanism, which we refer to as shutdown or the freeze response. The technical term is dorsal vagal, whereby the body really is pulling a ripcord when you're in sympathetic activation for too long in order to protect any damage from happening to our bodies. And we go into this shutdown state. And this shutdown state is that pervasive fatigue that we experience. Everything literally shuts down. So you feel heavy, you feel sluggish, getting out of bed is difficult, you have reduced gut motility, so you get things like constipation, your digestion is completely slowed, and this is really where we spend 90% of our time in long COVID. And this is why nervous system work is so relevant. If you have got a vagus nerve that is hyperactivated to go into sympathetic and the body cannot sustain sympathetic for the long term, it is naturally going to go into shutdown to keep itself safe. And for us, there's a lot of drawbacks to being in shutdown. It's very uncomfortable. You can't function, you can't eat, you can't work, you can't spend time with your friends, and it's very uncomfortable. So if you want to stop your body from constantly going into shutdown, you have to find a way to repair that vagus nerve and prevent it from going into sympathetic overdrive. And that sounds like it might be straightforward, but actually it's probably quite complicated and I'm guessing if you're watching this video you've tried and haven't been super successful. But there is a way to do it. If you want more information I have put it all together in my course and the details are below for you. I hope you have a tolerable week and I will see you again for another video. Take care.